Okay, good morning everyone. We are back on the record. Today is Wednesday, the sixth day of July in the year 2022. This is a budget hearing for the library, the public library, with the city, Jersey City Council. We had a scheduled 11.30 a.m. start. The clock on my cell phone is showing 11.35 a.m. Instead of asking for a roll call, I'm just going to announce the council members who are present. And you can just say present after I call your name. Councilperson Prinzeri. Here. Councilperson Soleil. Here. Councilperson DeGis. Here. And Council President Waterman. Here. Okay, we have four council members in attendance at 11.35 a.m. In addition, at its time of its preparation, the notice of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, July 1st. 2022 at 3 47 p.m. to the Municipal Council, Mayor, Business Administrator, Corporation Council, and local newspapers. So I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. And we have with us today, we have uh, the public li Jersey City Public Library, we have Kate Davis, Assistant Director, and Shane Smith, the Chief of Staff for the Public Library. So, Council President, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, well, welcome to um, our budget here in 2022. Uh, I don't know which one of you guys going to present. You going to be here? Um, no, okay. Just direct, just direct. okay, so then Kate, you can start, and then after that, we'll just ask questions, okay? Take it over. <laughs> All right, well, hello, everyone. Hello. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Unfortunately, Director Hill regrets that he mm -hmm. can't join us today, so he wasn't able to change his plans, but I'm happy to All be right, here <laughs> as a new assistant director. I'm excited to jump into the new leadership role. Okay. Uh, along with my colleague Shane Smith mm -hmm. and I guess we'll we'll kick off and get you started through our presentation mm -hmm. so we're going to start off with the JCFPL mission and vision because uh, this is going to be driving a lot of the decisions that we're going to be talking about that we're making now and in the future in terms of budgets and beyond so you will see us referring back to it throughout the presentation and our mission is we promote lifelong learning and cultivate equity in our community through innovative programs engaging collections welcoming spaces and committed staff so we'll be referring back to that and for our key initiatives we're going to start with innovative programs and we're going to focus on a few partnerships that we're very proud of in terms of this and we'll start with our digital equity project with Angela Cares. And this is a pilot program at our West Bergen branch. And um, we provided about 10 weeks of digital literacy training to seniors along with Angela Cares. And you can see in the picture their graduation photo. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then moving on. Another partnership is with the Jersey City Public Schools, to specifically their Department of Special Education. And it's our Fun Fridays program. We've had over 73,000 attendees and 20 collaborations since we launched it in January of 2021. And it's also won numerous awards, including the 2021 STEM Collaboration of the Year from New Jersey STEM Pathways. And this was in conjunction with Liberty Science Center and the Jersey City Public Schools Department of Education, Special Education. And um, the 2022 Miss Rumpheus Award from NJLA, the New Jersey Library Association, for outstanding program, which is stellar in spreading ideas and literacy, as well as collaborative, innovative, and replicable by other librarians and educators. We're also proud of numerous other partnerships that you can see on the following slide, um, especially with our city departments, the Department of Health and Human Services, Immigrant Affairs, Cultural Affairs, and even City Hall, as you can see in the picture there. You might see some of your colleagues. Um, and also with Jersey City Housing Authority, New Jersey City University, Rising Tide Capital, Amerigroup, and Read Across America. And then moving on, our engaging collections. So one of Director Hill's priorities is to grow our foreign language collection to better meet the needs of Jersey City's diverse population. So 20% of our book budget is dedicated to acquiring foreign language materials. And we also have our newly renovated Biblioteca Criolla, which is open to the public. And we will be celebrating with cultural events for Hispanic Heritage Month. September to October, as well as commemorating Criollo's 50th anniversary as a trailblazing Spanish language public library collection and Hispanic Heritage Cultural Center. And continuing on, we're working on welcoming spaces. So one way that we're creating welcoming spaces in 2022 specifically has been our library card signup campaign, Power in Your Pocket. As you can see, um, 
we have been able to significantly exceed our average number of monthly library card signups by using in-person outreach, school partnerships, and email and social media. And also be on the lookout for more power in your pocket through the rest of the year, especially in September, which is library card sign-up month. So we hope to see you at some events. We also have our library card design contest. As part of our efforts to create a library that everyone can feel at home in, we asked our patrons to participate in a library card design contest, and we received over 80 submissions across three age groups, children, young adults, and adults, and we'll be debuting the three winning card designs in September. And you see our award winners there. <laughs> And then moving on to our committed staff. So we have been supporting our staff to deliver outstanding service to our patrons and to establish JCFPL as a public library leader. And we've been able to do that through um, being honored with numerous awards. So John Butler, our, our small business services leader, and myself won the ELC, which is the Entrepreneurship Libraries Conference pitch competition this year. So we won $2,250 to support local entrepreneurs, and we'll be working with Rising Tide Capital on this project. Um, we also have John Beekman of the New Jersey Room, who is winner of the Schwartzberg Award for Historic Preservation, and it's an award that um, honors work that's inspired and influenced others in the library profession. And myself, as a youth services librarian, won the Miss Rumpius Award for Outstanding Children's Program, which uh, we touched on a little bit earlier, our Fun Fridays program. So we're happy to be modeling um, excellence in the field. And we're also preparing to um, we're preparing for three new locations and 14 new full-time employees. So we're looking forward to the launch of our Communipaw branch by the end of this year and the Central Avenue satellite by the end of 2023. And we anticipate opening a Holland Gardens branch library in 2024. And now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Shane Smith. Thanks, Kate. Um, so yeah, so Kate has highlighted some of the uh, some of the things that we've been doing in the community throughout the year, and I want to talk a little bit about the specifics of the budget, and you know what really makes all of that possible behind the scenes. Starting uh, with just as just as our bird's eye view of some of our key statistics, get a sense of the size of the library. Um, Jersey City is the largest municipal library in the state. Um, and we are one of the largest in the metro area as well. Um, so we have 10 locations, soon to be 12 by the end of next year. Uh, that's over 158,000 square feet of facility space. We also have the Bookmobile, of course, which is our mobile branch. Uh, we have over 600,000 print volumes available for the public, as well as 2 million digital items. It's quite an extensive collection. Uh, we have over 100 full-time and part-time employees. And one thing I want to highlight about our staff which is, uh, is that we really are as diverse as Jersey City. Um, and I think one way to encapsulate that is through the languages that our staff speaks. We, we speak over 16 languages collectively. Um, so in addition to English, of course, we speak Spanish, Arabic, Hindi, Tagalog, uh, as well as a numerous other languages like Gujarati, Urdu, Italian, Portuguese, Igbo. So there's a large number of languages represented in ways that we can offer our services. Um, and we do have over 194,000 library card holders currently, and as Kate pointed out, that's growing every day. Our next slide is just our organizational chart. Um, that's uh, for your information, but I also want to uh, highlight some of the priorities that Director Hill is emphasizing um, in, in the organization chart. So what we're doing is meeting community need through a variety of means, right? Our facilities, collections, and resources, and that's why we have a new assistant director, which is my colleague here, Kate. Uh, we're also building an accountable and effective organization, making sure that we're a good steward of the public resources. That's a big part of my role as the new chief of staff. Um, we also are emphasizing our public programming. So we've uh, onboarded uh, a youth services and programs coordinator, and we're planning to onboard uh, and recruit and onboard an adult services and programs coordinator as well. And we're laying the, the, the groundwork for future growth uh, by recruiting a development officer later in the year as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh -huh. um, so on the next slide, this is just uh, a little bit of information about our revenue. Uh, there's a few things that I want to point out here. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see how the library budget has grown, which is obviously very positive. Um, and uh, we're, you know, what we're really using those, those extra dollars for is to prepare for the future. But in addition, we're also um, looking back at the previous levels of funding. Uh, as you can see, we had quite a, well, quite a jump from 2018 to 2019. That's about a 20% increase in our budget in that year, which was great. Yeah. Um, but what it means is that before that time, we were limited in what we could do. So we're using some of these extra dollars now 
to make up for what we were unable to do due to funding shortages previously. Um, I also just want to point out that, um, you know, while the numbers are going up each year, our percentage growth is not going up as quickly as it was. So we're keeping an eye on inflation, and obviously we're not the only uh, organization that's facing issues with inflation, but this year, actually, inf currently, so far, inflation has double, is double what our percentage growth of our budget year on year. So that's just something that we're keeping an eye on. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a definition here of the one-third mill, just in case anybody's unfamiliar with how our uh, funding is structured. I'd be happy to okay. answer any questions about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, of course, with revenues come expenditures. So this is just an overview of how we are spending the money uh, for this current year. Uh, we're spending about 72% of our budget, or $11 million, on salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. And then we also focus on patron services, which includes all of our print and electronic materials, all of our digital resources, as well as the free Wi-Fi hotspots that we make available to the public, and additionally, our public programming. Um, our facilities and maintenance is about 9% of our budget. That's rent, utilities, et cetera, et cetera, cleaning, security. Um, and administ for administrative costs, we try to keep that pretty slim, around 3%. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's our total projected expenses for 2022. Um, I just wanted to highlight some of the facilities needs that we have. Um, we, ha we have an aging uh, physical plant in general, um, and that's a good thing because it means that we've been in part of the part of the community for a very long time, but it also means that we need to invest uh, significantly in some of our facilities. So we have some immediate needs here, um, and I just want to point out one thing specifically in, in emergency repairs. We have about $440,000 that we're looking at spending the current year on emergency repairs, and of that, 250000 or so is, is in the Miller branch, um, and that is a beautiful building, it's a, and it's 100 years old this year. We're celebrating the centennial of Miller branch, uh, and we want to make some investments in that building. We need to make some uh, repairs, the facade and some of the bathrooms. Um, but we also want to do uh, some additional upgrades. And um, in addition to that, we have some repairs we need to make at other locations, such as Gardner Main Library down here, downtown, uh, Heights Branch, Five Corners. Uh, we also want to make some significant upgrades to Lafayette Branch, which is another branch that's very close to 100 years old. Um, and uh, we're right now we're in conversations with the landlord there to make some specific upgrades, including uh, ADA accessible entrance. Uh, as we have mentioned, we have two new locations coming online, that's the Communipaw branch, as well as the satellite location on Central Avenue. So we will have some startup costs this year associated with those locations. And uh, Director Hill's committed to returning to full staffing by the, uh, by the middle or end of next year, mm -hmm. um, because we have had some, excuse me, uh, during COVID we've had some resignations as mm -hmm. and retirements and so on. So we're looking to, to fully staff. Um, and then in terms of our future growth, um, these are just some of the bigger projects that we're looking forward to over the next uh, five, maybe ten years. Um, in the nearer term, we're looking at completing the renovation of the historic Gardner Main Library, um, and that is a $10 million project, and we were fortunate and um, grateful to receive a, a $5 million construction bond from the State Library, as well as a $5 million match from the city uh, to complete that project. Mm -hmm. So that's, on our, that's something that we're working on uh, right now. We also will have some startup costs coming with another new branch in the in the next year in 2024. We're working with Jersey City Housing Authority on the on a, opening a branch in the Holland Gardens area, um, and then of course, as I mentioned, Miller. Uh, we have we have some big plans in mind for Miller. We're just thinking about how we can fund those, but that's something that's like a, a longer term project. We did it. We were able to do an assessment in 2020 um, and price that a full renovation for Miller at around 20 million dollars. So that's something that we're actively figuring out how we're going to be able to fund in the, ne in the next couple of years. Uh -huh. um, and then finally here, uh, since the last time uh, that the library and you all met this way was mid-year in 21, we just wanted to give you uh, just a sort of an update on where we landed in 2021. And you can see that the um, percentage-wise in, in terms of our spending, uh, we're very much similar to how we're, how we're moving forward in 2022. Um, and, uh, we were able to do a lot in 2021 as well, which we'd be happy to share with you anytime. Um, and with that, I think Kate and I would be happy to mm -hmm. clarify any questions or provide more detail on anything. Thank you very much. Cool. Any questions? Go ahead, guys. Yeah. Um, a couple of questions. Um, 
First question uh, regarding the Marion branch. Mm -hmm. I know at one point in time there was conversation because the building had been sold and they weren't sure if they were going to be able to continue in that space. And for a very small library, it's it's got very high usage. So is that like, what's the status with that for Marion? We have a uh, continuing lease with the landlord. We have there's no indication whatsoever that we will need to leave that space. Great. Yeah. And um, in fact, something that we're thinking about, just sort of idea, like thinking about in the idea stage at this point, is whether we need to expand that location because, as you mentioned, it does yeah. uh, get a, quite a bit of usage, especially considering its small size. It's really, yeah. it's a real a powerhouse. But for now, we're very happily at home in that space. And I, know, I know from a recreation standpoint and from a park standpoint, there are going to be a lot of improvements with Marion Pavonia Park. We have the new field. You've got the pool right there. So creating a hub. For youth and youth activity, I think would be really great for the residents of Marion, even though technically they're no longer on Ward B, um, but also for Marion Gardens too and doing that yeah. kind of outreach. Um, and then the second question I have, this actually goes back to a conversation from a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. when we were bouncing around the idea of a municipal ID mm -hmm. and where that might live. I know some of us had gone to Newark and learned about the program they have there. Mm -hmm. And I know in other municipalities, they do house this under the library. Yes. Um, and to varying degrees of success, mm -hmm. but I know like right now for this, like every year this comes up for parents who don't have a photo ID to get their kids into the swimming pools. And, you know, and just for like, like basic, basic services when it comes to, um, you know, like, like with, our, with our health department, with WIC and with some of the, the programs that we have to give people a hand up mm -hmm. that they might need. So is there any conversation about exploring this again? And does it make sense for it to live in the library? Yeah, we would love to explore that. I think, Kate, maybe you could talk a little bit about how that right. would look at us on a services level. But I, I'm there There are definitely other libraries that are doing it. Elizabeth is an example. There are yeah. models that are yeah, nearby. Elizabeth is a great, yeah. that's a great example. That was another one that we have been looking at. I know with, with Newark, they were doing more things, but they're like, as it relates to banking, but those haven't really been long-term solutions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of banks have moved out of that program. Mm -hmm. But I do think that, you know, if you're issuing somebody a library card, maybe the, a photo version would be a great, right. great first start. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we so, yeah, would so love we to talk more about that. Coordinate a time to do that. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Can you discuss uh, the Central Avenue satellite and what exactly is going to be put there? And um, is it going to be like the whole floor? Elect like I've heard a lot of um, rumors about it, you know, and I would love to have it there. But if you could just give me a little more information as to what's happening there. Yeah, of course. So um, we have been working with Director Flanagan since that that a lot of that space is going is being mm -hmm. used by Health and Human Services. So we actually were able to go there a few months ago. Director Hill and I and a few others went there and had a site visit, and we saw the space that was being um, was was being considered to be set aside for the library, which is very exciting. What we'd like to do with that space is turn it into a learning center. Um, we've been. Uh, looking at making potentially a combination of our literacy program as well as Biblioteca Criolla be able to, to really kind of run that space um, and offer services to the community there. Um, it would be a satellite, so we wouldn't be moving either of those departments from where they're currently housed, but just adding services in that location. What the space that we saw when we went on a site visit was not a full floor, but it may be that, you know, the project has changed since then. I don't know, but uh, we're all we know is we're very excited to move forward and uh, and looking forward to to opening up some some space there and working with with uh, Department of Architecture as well. It's excuse me, Division of Architecture as well as Department of Health and Human Services. Go ahead. Can you speak to the literacy and the GED program? Do you know approximately like how many youths had to get their GED through you, mm -hmm. especially during the COVID years? That's a great question. I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but I can definitely get back to you on that. I know that JSEP refers mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. to you. Yep. Um, is that a burden at all? Um, I don't believe that it is. Um, I would I would love it if, if you could meet with the, the director of our literacy program, Darnell Richardson. She'd be able to give you a lot of those details. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I know that we have a steady flow of, of folks coming in. Um, I would... I definitely don't think it's a burden, but maybe there's a need for more funding to back up. I don't know. I mean, you know, that's how I would. That's how I would. How I would approach it. If we have more um, folks in need of services than we can provide, then we want to find a way to to build, build the funding. And I think because we just saw cultural affairs, so these things jumped into my head. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing a lot with uh, you know the different cultural communities. If you wanted to link with them on some of the foreign language materials, 
especially if they're doing celebrations and flag raisings, yeah. some communication between both offices to promote both their events and your, yours as well. And I see other cities adding um, campaigns for more library cards to voter registration drives, um, dog licensing drives, yeah. things like that. So I would probably be just a point person to other departments. Um, as well as maybe Jersey City Rec introducing more trips to the library during your special events during the summer and the after school programming wouldn't be an additional cost on you guys, but it would actually increase an audience. Mm -hmm. So those are some things that popped in. Those are all great ideas. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't know, Kate, if you want to mention some of the stuff that we've been doing with the schools and the tours. Yeah, so we actually have um, a new outreach coordinator that has been working with cultural affairs. So we are working towards, you know, working with them a lot more and having more of a strong partnership. And, and what was the, the last thing you said? The uh, Jersey City Recreation. Yeah, and so we do have a strong connection with them as well in their youth development program. So last year we would visit their summer camps and uh, we'd bring the bookmobile and things like that. So um, that's another partnership that we definitely would like to strengthen. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, is there any way we can have some bookmobiles at some of the senior centers where we have seniors that can't mm -hmm. leave their facilities? And maybe they could have once a month some yeah. access to new material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we want to look at over the dir director wants to look overall at our bookmobile stops and think about how we're how we're using that vehicle. But yeah, they do they do visit some senior centers, but perhaps there's a way that we can do more, you know, by scheduling something once a month or something like that rather than every week. That's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys have book clubs? You know, like um, everyone's reading the same book. And mm -hmm. I think if you're going to have the satellite idea. office at, on Central Avenue mm -hmm. with the senior center, it's going to be like a senior center, maybe okay. like have a book club meeting. Um, that will work, yeah. I remember, you know, then maybe have a lunch. I mean, they already get lunch there, so maybe they could talk about the book that they're reading. Yeah, so. that's true. That's a good idea. It yeah, we, we have some interesting partnerships. We were doing virtual book clubs uh, during the pandemic, of course, but we're also trying to show up in different spaces. So we're actually talking with um, Jersey Wine and Spirits about doing like um, an adult book club where you can drink like the book you're reading kind of thing. So we're trying to, <laughs> you know, adapt, uh, make, make a show up in different spaces because right now a lot of our physical spaces can't accommodate a lot of people so we're trying to s figure out how we can do that while you know places are kind of closed for renovation or mm -hmm. you know our spaces are adapting uh, but we definitely want to have more community spaces for book clubs and other activities like that to bring the community together not so much for the the physical books which are obviously we love them and are important but also for like cultural events and uh more experiences do you uh does the library do like nighttime meetings like if i was to have a community meeting um would you guys be able to come out and speak about the services mm -hmm. just because i know there are so many services that happened during the pandemic like you guys are giving out mobile hotspots to families that didn't have internet access you do career services you look over resumes you print out things that people need to print out um i think like I would love to have a representative come to like some of these community meetings and say, hey, this is what the library does, you know, or come to one of my community meetings and, you know. Yeah, we have, we have been going to some of the neighborhood association meetings and we work with some like Friends of the Parks when they have meetings. Uh, we also have evening hours. So like in our main branch, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're open till 8 p.m. And again, we're trying to adapt so that we can offer space to have meetings and you can come to the library and have your meeting. Um, so, I mean, these are our goals for yeah, the future. And we're <laughs> Put us on your calendar. We're happy to we're happy to come and speak to any of your constituents at any time. We we would love I, that. Thank I you. can attest to that. And also yeah. Miss Debbie from West yes. Bergen has been fantastic with outreach mm -hmm. at many of our events on the west side of the city. Um, and and again, like that 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 library we're so glad we found a new home for. Yes. Thank God, because I don't know what we would have done. Um, but I, th I think to to the point, I think the work that you guys did during COVID with mm -hmm. ramping up virtually and getting yeah. out hotspots was, was extraordinary. Yeah. Like, I think that you all should be incredibly commended 
for all of the, the work that you guys did. And now, so so with with the distribution of hotspots, are you guys still doing that? Do you get them back from students? Like, like how does how does that work with our school and with our young people? Uh, so we are working with the schools, with especially with our new outreach coordinator, to let students know about it. I know that we just recently got a tech grant so that people can rent computers and hotspots and have all of that. Although I, I'm not sure the statistics on how many students are using it. I think it's mostly adults. But again, like we, we are trying to strengthen our partnerships with the schools so that families can be aware of the things that we can provide to the students. Yeah. What kind of grants you guys have? Y'all apply for grants. One of the council people couldn't be here, and he wants to know about grants. Okay. Do you apply for grants, and if so, what type of grants? Well, the, the, the bulk of our grant work that we do on a yearly basis is through the literacy program. That's a, that's a, that program is primarily grant funded, and that's through community, um, community service block grants, okay. community development block, block grants. grants. Okay. Um, so that's one major thing that we, you know, we get Okay. We get a major grant for two major grants for each year, um, and then we also have done some smaller, smaller grants. Um, we just we got a grant from Hudson County uh, earlier this year, or maybe it was late last year, uh, to preserve all of the archives mm -hmm. of the video archives for the community awareness series. So we're in the process okay. of, of digitizing and preserving those archives. Um, there was another grant. Uh, well, we got the ELC pitch, which is, you know, it was a competition, but technically mm -hmm. it's a grant. Um, so we're going to be using that grant, those grant funds to reach out to local entrepreneurs. Um, and we're always looking for opportunities. So, you know, anytime if there's anything in particular that you or the other council person uh, wants us to think about, uh, we would love to try and make that happen. Absolutely. Our grant department, because we're going to have a grant department, right? They could benefit also from that too, right? They can uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know the specifics of what grants are available, but um, yeah. if you reach out to the finance director, Carmen Gandula, she'll mm -hmm. connect you with our, our grants director. This way, yeah. You That's great. Go for. Thank you, thanks. You know, also, you know, I see that you guys is um, going to partner with Holland Gardens. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, is it before the renovation or after? After. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure. Yes, thank you. Because I've been through a lot down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just yeah, want no, to be sure because um, I know, you know, they're going through that redevelopment and all that yes. down there, and so I see it's, it's new. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't now. That's all. No, that's <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah, no, so we've been working with uh, Director Brady Phillips okay. uh, as they're okay. preparing the RFP for that, right. for, for that whole development, and okay. so they've been... They've been really inclu including us in the process so okay. that we can make sure that that library space is really useful to the residents and to good. the neighborhood as a whole. Good, yeah. good, good. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> That's good. Anyone, go ahead. For the centennial for Miller Branch, what kind of programming do mm -hmm. you guys have planned over like the next six months because that's mm -hmm. that's a really big deal and people love that library in that part of the city yes absolutely yeah to be honest i think we were hoping to do a bit more than we have done so far but we're working with the branch manager there as well as some other um some other members of our staff to plan stuff for the fall we want to make a big splash and have some sort of uh you know big celebration and let everybody know how how beloved that branch is some of the some of the um the facilities needs that we have there are things that we really need to address um, immediately. So I think some of that stuff has taken priority over for the branch manager and other staff for in terms of planning events. But but looking towards the fall and and you know the later part of the year, we will we will not let this year go by without without celebrating. That'd be great. And then however I can assist you guys with that, please do. Let Thank me you. Know. Thank yeah. you very much. And so with, with the facilities upgrades, this is, this is the ADA lift, this is some of those immediate needs that have been kind of ongoing? Is that yeah, the, it's the, 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 the public bathrooms in the building. Yeah. Um, there, we have an issue with flooding in the basement in the auditorium. Uh, and there's some issues with the facade that we have to address. Um, and the ADA lift is definitely a major, uh, major concern for us. Uh, it's also, it's also a major expense, <laughs> so we're, we're, it's it's quite unlikely, frankly, that we would be able to address that in the current year budget unless we had some, you know, some other additional funds available for that purpose, uh, which we are looking for. Uh, but the main things that we're that we're focusing on right now are the bathroom facilities uh, and the the facade and the flooding in the basement. There was a $5 million grant that uh, the library received, was it two years ago or is it? it was in 2020, yeah. 2020? Mm -hmm. Was that a one-time, it was a one-time thing? Um, 
Yes, that's a one-time matching grant uh, okay. to match the $5 million construction bond that we received from the state library. And we're using that total of $10 million to complete the renovation of Gardner Main Library. Okay, that was pretty huge. I mean, it was... Yes. So, I mean, I'd love to see more of that. And if there's any way we could talk to our state assembly people to, you know, because you guys work with Angela Cares, if we could get yes. some more funding towards our libraries, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And state aid for the for the public libraries is an issue every year. Um, mm -hmm. And we actually have very active delegation. Um, we've spoken a lot with Assemblywoman McKnight, but also mm -hmm. Assemblyman McCurgy specifically is a, is a really strong advocate for state library funding. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, every single year where, you know, the public libraries all over the state are really asking for, for the state to kind of give us a little bit more a more <laughs> more funding. Um, and particularly, you know, not to get into the weeds on this issue, but if you look at other states, there's other states are really doing a lot more, frankly, than New Jersey is in terms of state funding for libraries. So we'd really like to be able to reach that reach that level. Which other states? I just want <laughs> I'd like to know who we're in competition with. Well, frankly, Ohio is a really good example of, okay. um, of a state that really funds uh, their public libraries very well. Okay. Um, and they, you know, I'm, I'm not 100 percent familiar with their with their funding model, but um, it is potentially something that we could think about here okay. in New Jersey. I don't know, Kate, you might know a little bit more about it. Yeah, I mean, and it's just reflected. And if you look at um, like starred libraries, the, all of them are you know, not all of them, obviously, but a majority of them are in Ohio. Like on every list, it's like half Ohio. So they definitely have something going that if we could replicate, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> definitely reflect better on us as well mm -hmm. in, in the nation. Thanks. Okay, that's it. All right, see, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It wasn't that bad at all. Thank that you. was great, thank you very see? much. Thank Jake. you for what you do, you do a great thank job. You. May I have a motion to adjourn at 12.07 p.m. was made by Council Person Prinzeri. May I have a second? Second. Second by Council Person Soleil. All in favor of the motion to adjourn at 12.07 p.m. Council members present by acclamation, please say aye. We are out of here at 12.07 p.m. Thank you very much. Okay. And remember, teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. Have a good day. We're back you at, thank you. <laughs>